This is Collected Clan, Episode 9. Something like, I love you, I love you, I love you. Be who you are. Repeatedly. (laughs) I love you. (laughs) Welcome to Collected Clan, the podcast about outstanding people I've met along the way. People with interesting stories, tribes, and ideals. People who've made their mark in the world and in my life. I'm your host, Gregory Byerline. I've met a lot of people over the years, and many people come and go. But these people are the company that you keep. Everyday people, just like you and me. In this bonus episode, I have a special treat for you. This episode is a collection of unreleased material from previous episodes with guests who are mothers. This podcast series is all about conversation, which is much more than an interview. They're two-sided, not just one-sided Q&A. To that end, I don't keep a list of questions to ask every guest. Except in this case. There's one question I ask each guest. One topic, rather, that I covered with each of them. And that's what I have in store for you today. I asked each of them to say something to and for each of their children so that when their children come across this recording years from now, however they find it, because once it's online, it's online forever. A time capsule of love notes, encouragements, and affirmations from these mothers' hearts to their children. This is so needed today. This is one of the reasons this podcast exists. As a society in recent years, we've done a lot of talking at each other instead of talking with each other. Or in this case, using words for another. This is missing in our world. And this is my way of adding a raindrop to the ocean and trying to create a ripple of change. Planting seeds now that will grow into something of greater value later. Think about the loved ones we've all lost whose voices we'd love to hear today. If only through this single method, here's a way for these children to hear their mother's voices forever and ever. So let's get started. First up is Tanya Willis from Episode 5. What I would say to them, collaboratively, to each one of them, simply, you are good enough. And you are amazing. And... I feel so strongly about that. I'm going to say that again, that you are good enough. (laughs) And for them, it's kind of the same thing in my mind. So right now, they are three, six, and seven years old. And right now, they are so full of life and energy and love of all things and passion. And they love nature and, of course, dogs and I wish so much for them that as they grow, they could maintain uh, and hold on to pieces of that innocence and that just natural curiosity and natural love for life and happiness and not be jaded by the world as they learn more about people and learn more about how the world works. I want them to remain true to their passions and to themselves and try to hold on to that genuine happiness of life. I wish I could bottle up their giggles. You know, I can be having the worst day, even in rescue. I could, I could be coming off of a phone call where people are threatening to harm a dog or there's just, you know, thinking about all the dogs that need somewhere to go and, and feeling overwhelmed because we can't help them all. And when I walk into the school and pick up Marley, my three-year-old every day without fail, runs up and gives me the biggest hug and says, mommy, I love you. And I missed you all day. And that, that is such a beautiful innocence. And I have to say like, just with the whole, you are good enough. I have seen already with them being so young. I don't know if you're, if you are into a lot of sports and things just yet with your kids, but we've, we over the past couple of years have gotten into different things. Like I have one that does gymnastics and and all these different avenues. And I think as they are exposed to other sports or community groups or at school, even though they're so young and my oldest is just in second grade, I still see so many things around them in the world saying you have to be this way. You have to be A and B is not acceptable or all of these paths that people say, you know, you've got to do this or you've got to go down this road and I don't want them to succumb to that. You know, I want them to know that they really are enough and they are good enough and to never feel like, oh, I've got to do that better or 
that wasn't good enough. I, mm-hmm. I've got to try harder that they just simply are amazing. <laughs> Next up is Ginger Eldridge from episode eight. I would say how much I admire her. I admire her for how she has pressed through some really hard times in her life. She's the strongest 17-year-old I've ever known. She's determined and she's focused, and I am in awe of that. A lot of people go, well, you raised her good, and I'm, I'm sitting back going, gosh, I, how much credit can I take for that? Because we all have free will, and there are parents that raise their kids perfectly and they end up going off the deep end, you know, or being terrors as teenagers. So for me, I just, I admire my daughter. I, I just am so proud of her and all that she has overcome in her life. And I just am so excited to see what the future holds for her. So years from now, that's what I would say. I'm proud of you. And I ad- I truly admire you as a person, not just my daughter, but as a as a person, as a woman, a young woman. I admire you. Next up is Bethany Torino from episode four. You know, now we have a blended family, and I never saw that coming. And so there are ten children that I would talk to in the future, and you know, I think that the thing that is most important to me that they know in the future is that whatever they grow up to be and however they get there, I'm proud of them. And I know that it's been quite a journey and that they're smart enough and they're wise enough and they're kind enough and and the people that they are already make me proud every day. And so there's Michael's the oldest and he definitely sets his own path and he's, he's working it out and figuring it out. And, you know, there's Monet and she's the next oldest. She's Jimmy's and she's just the light of the room. She's just the brightest spot. And in the future, I hope that she knows that and that she knows her worth to the point that we do. And then the next is Jesse Lyric and she's mine and she's, She's been my friend ever since she was a baby and she went through two divorces with me and bless her heart. I would have never chosen that for her, but she's one of the strongest, most independent and flexible (laughs) creative children you could imagine. And now for her in the future, I know that she will be loved and she will find that love that she is hoping for and waiting for and she just doesn't know how fabulous she is and the next is Alyssa and Alyssa is Jimmy's and she is the strongest willed most reckless messy child that you can imagine she is a tornado of a child and now she's a young woman she's 19 and you know going on 30 but she has the the compassion of Jesus and the the mission of St. Teresa. I mean, she's just going to move mountains someday. And in the future, I can't wait to see what those are. She's just beautiful and blessed and we're just happy with every mess. <laughs> Next in line is her brother, Joe, which is also Jimmy's. Joe is exceptional in everything he does. In the future, he would like to be a Navy SEAL and go on to the Naval Academy and do great things. And I think he's going to be a preacher. So there, I said it. Joe, when you're listening to this in the future, I told you so. He has such a gift of speaking God's word and truth. It's just amazing. The next is Journey, and Journey is mine. And Journey is brilliant on the piano and vocally. He's already the number one bass in the state of Tennessee, um, number one bass too vocally. He is quirky and funny and introverted to the extreme, and I just love him like crazy, and he's going to be some musical giant someday, and I don't even know, maybe writing movie scores. Bridge is next. 
Um, Bridge is our very unique, marches by his own beat. He's autistic, and that is such a beautiful world, and it brings a new beauty every day because he sees things that we miss, and it's a wonderful and beautiful challenge and um, treasure in him and in the future I know that I will see him accomplish things that we never thought that he could right now his goal is to probably he would tell you um, that he wants a million a million subscribers on YouTube and he just might get there and story is just as graceful and beautiful and knowing as a child can be and she's beyond her years in wisdom and maturity and she's going to be something lovely and gracious and beautiful and in whatever form it is I just I can't wait to see the beauty that she spreads across the world after that is Manhattan and she is a thinker she is strong-headed she is imaginative and she is fierce and she is like the town Manhattan and she's going to rock the world in some way and I can't wait um I can't wait to see exactly what that is but I think she's also going to be the one that comes around and makes sure mom's okay every once in a while and then there's baby Bella and baby Bella belongs to both Jimmy and I and she is unbelievable and she's a superhuman she's got some kind of a superhero trait she already calls herself a superhero and I, I honestly think she might be either an Olympic gymnast someday because she's definitely got that whole thing going for her or she might end up president of the United States or something <laughs> in the future. But, you know, mostly in the future, I want to know that they have found God and that they have witnessed the beauty and compassion of God in their life and that they are connected to him on a daily basis and that they have found themselves in him because that's ultimately why they're here. So I know that was long, but there is, there, there are 10 children. So edit that however you want. I was prepared. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And next we have Elizabeth Foster from episode six. Something like, I love you, I love you, I love you. Be who you are. Repeatedly. (laughs) I love you. (laughs) Um, Be brave and love courageously and create things that are good in your relationships and with your hands and be loving to yourself as well in the midst. I think that's what I would tell her. Beautiful. Remember, folks, she's a songwriter and poet, short and sweet. This episode is brought to you by Molly Pop Studios, specializing in lifestyle portraiture of children and families. At Molly Pop Studios, we capture that special smile, mischievous smirk, a quick kiss for daddy, or a special secret or snuggle with mommy, like the cover image for this episode, which was made by Molly Pop Studios, and sometimes even the furry, barking kind of child. Please visit online at www.mollipopstudios.com or on Facebook at Molly Pop Studios and book your session today to make your own photographic time capsules. Next up, we have Jenny Baker from Episode 7. Lucy, I'll start with you. And I will tell you today the same thing that I hope I'm still telling you five years, ten years, twenty-five years and what I've written down for you 50 years from now, that Lucy Baker, you are one of the most capable little girls, girls that I have ever known. You are so strong. You have a mental strength where you are able to think quickly and to think flexibly and multidimensionally. And you're able to verbalize Um, those thoughts and maneuver in relationships and conversations in a way that amazes me and it will continue to amaze me. And Lucy, you are capable. Anything that you set your mind to and determine to work hard at, you are capable of achieving. And I don't know what they'll be saying to parents, Lucy, when you're older, but 
I know that right now they say to parents, don't tell your kids that they can do anything because you're going to set them up for failure because they can't do anything. That may be true, Lucy Baker, for other children, but that is not true for you. I have seen you conquer and accomplish things that most seven-year-olds don't even think about. Lucy, I have seen you determined to train and run a race. Nobody else, no other kid ran. I have watched you figure out math and reading on your own at an age where most kids are not even thinking about reading or math. And so, Lucy, I believe that you are particularly gifted to be capable at anything you put your mind and your focus to. And even more than that, Lucy Baker, you are a leader. People listen to you and people follow you. And you have a courage that only could come from God, your creator and your maker. And he specifically gave you that courage because he has a very, very wonderful purpose for you. And that purpose, Lucy Baker, if you listen to him, and if you hide his truth in your heart, and you are a person of character, you are a person of integrity, Lucy, that purpose will change the world. You will lead people, you will love people, and most importantly, Lucy, you will care for people. And the world needs more of that. And so I will tell you these things today and forever. I will believe them for you on the days when you may not believe them for yourself. And I will hope those things for you on the days when you just wished you could just be a follower and not a leader and that you could just do what other people said and not argue and not need to have it the way that you think it should be. Sometimes, Lucy, being a leader is hard and it's a burden, but I will hope good and wonderful things for you, even when you may not want to carry the responsibility and the purpose that God has given you. And you are a good big sister and a good teammate, Lucy Baker. You care for your brother, you work with your brother, and you believe in your brother. And the world will will love you, but the world will never love you like your brother loves you. And the world will never love your brother like you love your brother. And so keep being a good teammate to him. Keep loving him and caring for him the way that you do. And together, you both will experience more joy in this life than you would if you were apart. And Levi Baker, son, you are a protector. I watch your heart. I watch you pick up swords and play fight. I watch you stand up and tell the world that boys protect girls because that's what we tell you. And that is oh so true. And God has made you a protector. He's made you a warrior. You will fight for justice. You will fight for injustice. You will free people. You will bring freedom to people who don't have that gift. And I believe that that will be your role, Levi Baker, as you get older. And so for you in the next 10 and 20, 30, 50 years, as you're listening to this, I'm excited to see the, the things that you set free and the injustices that you set right. I'm excited to see how you two grow into a gentle warrior. And gentle Levi is absolutely the right word to pair with warrior for you because you have such a tender heart. And that's what the world needs. The world needs warriors who are tender and who see these injustices and can have compassion and empathy. And so, Levi, I know that as you get older, that empathy will grow. Never lose that side of you, son. The world will tell you that masculinity does not look like empathy, and that is a lie. Never believe that lie. Masculinity is absolutely experienced and absolutely defined by compassion and empathy. Some of the greatest men in our history and our time in the world were the most compassionate and the most empathetic. And so never lose that tenderness about you as you go conquer the world. And Levi, I will tell you what I told your sister. 
love your sister, care for your sister like she loves and cares for you. You have a teammate for life in her. No one will love you like your sister loves you. So protect her and take care of her and see the value that lies in having a teammate like her. And to both Lucy and Levi, you are the greatest joys of my life. I did not know that this sweet place in my heart existed until I became your mother. And I am not perfect, and I will pay for your first round of therapy, I promise. And that's the one thing I want you both to know, is that perfection is not ever an expectation. I am going to screw up. I tell you that every day. I tell you that I'm sorry and I ask for your forgiveness. And that is something I would tell both of you. I hope that as you're older, that you continue to practice forgiveness. Say you're sorry more than you say you're right and forgive the minute someone asks for it. Don't hold bitterness and resentfulness in your heart. It only hurts you. And I love you both beyond words. I am delighted to be your mother. And because of that, I hope I'm still telling you this every night, even when you're 50 years old. But I love you, I delight in you, and I adore you. There you have it. Mother's Day Memos, saying it forward. Thank you, ladies, for sharing your heart here for your kids and for allowing us to hear it. You speak and have something worthwhile to say, and you say it kindly. Hope you all have enjoyed this bonus episode. Subscribe and share with your friends. Go to Apple Podcasts, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcasts. Search for Collected Clan. We'll be there. Never miss an episode. Be sure to visit the show notes for this episode at www.collectedclan slash Mother's Day Memos for additional info. And I'd love to hear from you about any specific follow-ups to this or previous conversations that you'd like to hear. Email me at collectedclan at gmail.com. And a big shout out to my friends Worldwide Groove Corporation for this episode's original music. The song is Mimosa from their album Chilodesiac Lounge Volume 1. Check out more of their music at worldwidegroovecorporation.com. Thanks for listening. Now go be you.